Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. In this episode, we're going to be rehousing my Chetapelma olivaceum or olivaceum or the Middle Eastern Gold or the Black Furry Tarantula. Two different names because there's two different kinds. One's a little lighter, one's pitch black. You'll see the one I have here is black, almost blue even. Beautiful spiders. Ones I found years ago by watching the channel World of Spiders. Saw some footage of them. Knew I needed to have them. They're also one of the only European or the only European tarantula out there because they're found on the island of Cyprus, which I think makes them extra cool. Now, Chetapelma olivaceum is an old world species from Cyprus, Turkey, Sudan, Egypt, and the Middle East. It's a medium fossorial species or Weber with females getting to be around four inches or so or 10.2 centimeters. And as for temperament, they're shy, fast, but they can be very defensive if caught out in the open or if they feel threatened. So that's something to keep in mind. And obviously with it being an old world species, it could pack a nasty bite. So you want to use caution and give them respect when working with them. So enough of just me talking. Let's get into taking a peek at my C. olivaceum or black furry tarantula. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Chetapelmum olivaceum or olivaceum. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Common name, Middle East gold or black furry. The reason why there's two different common names is there is apparently a dark black variant, which this one is here. And then there is a more light gold variant. I did have somebody chime in that lived in Israel that said they tend to find the darker variants in the southern region and the desert areas. And they find the gold version in the northern areas. This is also the only European tarantula. They are found on the island of Cyprus, which I think is pretty cool. So it's a Middle Eastern one. It's There's a European version. Awesome, awesome spiders. I first encountered these guys on the channel World of Spiders where he had footage of them in an old tomb and they were like living kind of communally. They were in very cl close proximity to each other in these nooks and crannies in these tomb walls. And there was these millipedes coming out and they were feeding off the millipedes. Now, since talking about that, I've had people ask if they think they're, I think they're communal. I would not set these up communally because it looked like each spider had its own territory and there was an abundance of food. So there was no reason for them to fight over it. So I would not keep them communally, but they are awesome some spiders nonetheless. Now, the last rehouse, which I'll show here, was in May 2020. At that point, we were moving the young lady out of what I had her in originally, which was a larger dram vial. At that time, I was keeping the substrate on the bottom a little moist, allowing the top to dry out a little bit. They were doing quite a bit of webbing. Both of them, I had two of them. One of them ended up being a mature male, and that one has since passed. Then we moved her into what we have here. This is one of the 1.5 quart M design containers. They no longer sell these on Amazon, so I will not be putting a link. There is a taller version that I use now that's actually better. I found I will put a link up to that. But this one here was five and three quarters inches by about six and three quarters inches by about 3.6 inches high or so. I used to use these for some of my smaller juveniles and such. And what we'll be putting into her into is this one over here, which we'll get to in a moment. So now what we are going to try to do is get her out of here. Of course, she's going to make things very difficult by sitting right on top of the enclosure. I'm hoping Billy can get some shots here, but I did post some pictures up on Instagram right after this one bolted. And she was stunning, almost a blue gray. So this is the point where I shut up because I'm going to be concentrating. Yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Well, that's how I foresaw saw it working, but foresaw, for, yeah, right? I want you to go in this. Uh, go in, <laughs> stop. I'm not letting go of that brush. Now, you know what? Where's a piece of cardboard? Here we go. I don't know how well she's going to show up in the plastic. But gorgeous spider. But, and again, I'll flash it. The nice thing is I take pictures. I put them up on Instagram, but I always save them for thumbnails later on. Gorgeous, almost blue-black. What we're going to do now is move this out of the way. Get her in here. Now, when anybody asking for about the paper towels, I always forget to explain that. We put the paper towels in the corner because should the spider get out, usually what spiders do is they circle. And a lot of times they'll pause in a corner and if you put a piece of paper towel down or something to hide them, they'll go under there. They'll feel safe, secure. There's no airflow. They're 
shielded from the lights and they'll just hunker down there and then you can carefully remove the paper towel and grab the spider. I always like to explain that one. And yes, it has worked for me before. All right, so what we're going to do is slowly try to get this one undone. And... I'm going to get this out of here. That, that's not what I thought I was getting. So what we're going to try to do, where's the big brush? I have a, well, she's just going to go out on her own. You know, I may, uh, I don't want to mess with her, but I really would like to get some shots, which is a beautiful spider. Now, th that kind of worked much better. <laughs> like, I, I, when I tried to construct this enclosure here, I did something a little different. If you notice, I have several pieces of cork bark stacked up. And when I saw the pictures of them in the wild, they had like nooks and crannies and rocks that were getting a little cracks and crevices, webbing it up, and then the webbing would come out of it. So I wasn't able to do that with rocks right now. Maybe when she gets a little bit larger, we'll move her again. But I wanted to construct something that gave her many nooks and crannies to go in so she could find a place to be in and that adapt as her burrow. So there's a starter burrow down there. There's also little things up here that you can go down underneath. I filled it with New Zealand sphagnum moss around here, again, to give her a little cover and some web to. So what I'm hoping is she'll kind of settle in there, use the moss, kind of create a nice little den, so to speak, start webbing out and hunt from that area there. And what we have here, as far as the enclosure setup, I have BioDude substrate. I have obviously many pieces of cork bark, New Zealand sphagnum moss, regular green sphagnum moss, some leaf litter, and she will be getting a water dish. Now, as slings, as I mentioned before, I kept the original slings in dram vials. Then I moved them into the one we just moved her out of. This one here is one of the M design containers. I will put a link to it. Hopefully I remember every time I forget, people get all upset. But then sometimes I put links in. Everybody asks for links after I already put a link. So we'll see how it goes. But this one's 12 and three quarters inches by seven and a uh, quarter inch by seven inches high. I love these for juveniles, for smaller adults even. This is one of the ones when I first read about them, I had read that they get to be five or six inches or so. I'm finding now after speaking to people that the females you can expect to get to be about four inches, maybe a little over four inches. This girl here is probably about three and a half, three and uh, three and three quarters, maybe. So she's got a little ways to grow, but not a huge spider. I did, as I mentioned earlier, have a mature male. He was right around the four inch, a gangly four inch mark. So they're not a huge species. As far as temperament's concerned, I've heard tales that they are very, very defensive. Unfortunately, I've not seen that with any of mine. I think we got one threat, threat posture when we moved the last one. That was about it. But they've actually been pretty calm overall. But I'm guessing that a lot of the folks that chime in about their defensiveness are folks that actually live with them. And if you catch them out in your home or out in the wild, yes, I'm assuming they would stand their ground and throw up a defense posture because they're scared, basically. And growth has been rather slow on these guys. I picked them up in October of 2019. They grew fairly fast at first, but once they hit around two inches or so, it's been very slow going since then. Not a bad thing at all, and obviously probably points to a more longer-lived spider, which would be great. As far as moisture is concerned, as slings, I did give them some moisture on the bottom. As juveniles, I kept it mostly dry in a water dish, and occasionally I just moistened down a corner or so. And then once they put on a decent amount of size, it was just water dish. I've caught them drinking a couple times, but they didn't seem to wipe the moisture. And this is a species that's known from hailing from very arid regions, so I wouldn't guess it would need a lot of moisture. And then temps, temps are usually in the... Uh, mid 70s or so in the winter time. So I keep the temperature up here around 73. So higher shelf 75, lower shelf 72. In the summertime, it's usually high 70s to mid 80s or so. Before that, we're at the other house. Temperatures were a little bit cooler and they did just fine in those temperatures. So there we go. C. olivasium, Middle East gold or black furry, awesome little spider. Definitely love these guys. And the nice thing is last time I posted a video up, it's, they're not the most common. They're not the most popular spider kept. But when I posted these up, there are a lot of folks out there that love them just like me. And it seemed like more folks were trying them out. So hopefully after this video, even more folks will try them out. 
So obviously she was very well behaved here. And I must say that both of them were also very well behaved, but that's not to say that folks might have ones that are a little more high strung. So always show caution when working with these guys. Last time I did this video, a lot of folks had never heard of them before. And some of you I know went out and got some after the fact or had just ordered some. So I'd love to hear back from you. What are you finding with yours? Are they webbing? Are they burrowing? Mine have not done a lot of burrowing. And that was something I kind of expected from them. They did a bit of webbing, but not a whole heck of a lot. I'm curious to see what this one does now that she has some space and she's in her adult digs. But I'd love to hear from the rest of you guys. What have you got? And for those of you that have the gold version, do you see anything different with the gold version? That'll do it for this one. As always, if you'd like to end up to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. I will put the old rehousing video down here. I will probably put the old World of Spiders video up here. You need to check it out if you haven't already. If you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a little while. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.